food starts as science. <sighs> Delicious. I experience the world through math, logic, and problem solving. Morning, chef. Oh! I, I don't know why, but I don't seem to relate to some of my colleagues. Lynn was raised by a wire monkey covered with cloth. She was part of an experiment at Quendleton University to see if compassionate parenting had an effect on adolescent behavior. <laughs> yes. Technically, we were never allowed to run an experiment like this. But before we got shut down, we discovered the answer. Your hand feels very good. It does. Truth be told, Blinn revolutionized the way we think of food. Blinn's food turns everything upside down. New and different are always good. You can't eat some of my food, even if you tried really hard. And that's because I'm not bound by the common expectations that the old guard is. She said, what if soup was hard? What if salad was loud? What if you got a bagel with cream cheese, but the cream cheese was the bagel, and the bagel was the cream cheese? I mean, she really mixed up the adjectives you'd use to describe food. What you gotta understand is that no one was doing this at the time. It was the wild west out there. There were no rules. There was no script. We were just flying by the seat of our pants. When she first started, some people scoffed at her for shunning convention. They assumed that anything that was the size of an atom was not a meal. They were clamoring. I'm still hungry. Why did I pay for this? Am I gonna die? They were total amateurs at eating food. People didn't understand her. They were even up in arms when she debuted her signature pasta. And that dish was a revelation. It was so fresh, so delicate. She was young, but she already knew how to work with pasta. Her pasta rocked the culinary world. It put her on the map. And she was the first to say, sure, we can eat pasta. But what if we eat around pasta? She was using the negative space of food. I mean, anyone can eat food, but to eat not food? Now that was an idea. At first, people did find Blinn's food alienating. It's all well and good to alienate your customers. That's fine. Honestly, great. But when she found out premier food critic Mike Gublonix was stopping by, ooh, anyone would really need to straighten up for him. Mike Gublonix is the king of eating food. And a good review from him means everything to a chef. I was feeling nervous about what to serve him, and I felt so uninspired. And when I feel uninspired, I return to my ingredients, which is what I call my gadgets. This is to harness the chewed up feeling you get on the roof of your mouth after eating Captain Crunch into a cocktail. This curtails the aging process of milk. This I've only tested once. But it can switch the properties of any human with an apple temporarily. For just an instant on the tongue, you could have the sensation of being an apple. I mean, isn't that cool? Being an apple has to be tasting one, right? Sure. Yeah. 
She literally has the ability to swap the chemical makeup of something. So of course she thought this was going to impress Gublanix, the king of eating food. I don't know why, but I knew I had to use that machine. I just had to. She was determined and nothing was gonna stop her, but no one could have seen what happened next. Excuse me, sir? Sir? What happened to this guy? Did he have a stroke? Someone call an ambulance. Gublanic swapped bodies with an apple permanently. That's it for this episode preview. To watch the full episode, go to dropout.tv and start your free trial today. Did they need to eat it? Did it taste good? How? Why? Who cares? Do you? Do I? Who's talking? It was thrilling. Thrilling. The whole thing was up. Was it food? Was it art? Was it murder?